Man, it's been quite a crazy weekend because not only did the first film for Rosa Other Capture come out, but they also gave us the trailer for the second film, and I figured it'd be a good idea to react and break down the trailer. Now, one big disclaimer before I start doing this is that I will be spoiling many of the events in the first film. Now, this trailer in and of itself spoils a ton of stuff as well. So if you are waiting for Rosa Other Capture to come to Disney+, Plus, which I think is going to be on June 12th, then don't watch this video and don't watch the trailer. For everyone else, let's get started. Okay, uh, let's go back for a couple seconds here. I want to point out some things. All right, so first of all, this is not... Sakuya, as you guys probably know or don't know, but this is not Sakuya. This is Sakura, a childhood friend of Sakuya, who is the body double for Sakuya. This, this is actually Sakuya, so keep that in mind. Now, someone said this spoiler isn't in this trailer, but that's not true because listen to what Rosa is saying here. I'll go back. Sakura mo. He just said, or she just said, Sakura. So, yeah, it spoils in the first couple seconds that this is Sakura. Tataka. And this is Sakuya. Also, this necklace here changes the eye color and also the voice of Rosa. That's why she sounds like a he in this trailer and basically every other trailer for Rosa to capture. So in the first couple seconds of this trailer, it makes it very clear who is who. Also, if you go back a couple seconds here, you can see Catherine following Sakura. She must be the one who rescued her at the end of the, not the end of the first film, but the second part of the first film where Rosa was close to rescuing her but then one of the Einberg members recaptured her which must have been Catherine or she's just serving as her guard what I really like about Catherine at least the way they show her here she seems like an airhead or someone a bit lazy and I think based on the other depictions of her in images and trailers that seems to be on point for her character I know a lot of people are very excited for her and I understand why but to me I think Nara is better and she's also shown a lot in this trailer so you get a little bit of both of the two new Einberg ladies or not frame pilots as you will in these trailers at least well yeah in these trailers and specifically this one as well also sakura is wearing the empress outfit because at the end of the third part of the first film callus i think i said cheris in our video but it's callus who's that young boy who looked like a the love child of schneizo and canon well apparently norlin killed him so sakura here who's supposed to be sakya or they think is sakya is going to become the 101 empress of neo britannia that's why she's wearing that outfit Okay, now let's continue. Tatakatte ubaikaise. Kanete yori Sapporo Gate ni wa ooku no terrorist ga sen Okay, let's go back here. So this is Divik. He is one of the Einberg members. He must be one of the main ones because he's leading this whole operation. And he's talking about, I think, destroying a ghetto. I'm not sure. These are members of the Seven Stars, which is this resistance group fighting against neo Britannia within the Hokkaido block of Japan. I don't have their names memorized or most characters in this series, but I do have a listing here. So this is, I believe, Isao. This is Shota. This is uh, Tomo Oda. Oh, I'm sorry, Oda. Yeah, this is Oda, my bad. This is Shota, this guy here, the Shota Minumori. I think that's his name. I don't know who this guy is, but that's the identity of these three characters. <laughs> So here are the Camdens, and they're attacking a ghetto. Now, one very important thing to know about the Camdens is they actually have multiple colors, and I'm looking at my picture here. I'll have it displayed as well, but they have different colors that correspond to whichever Einberg member they're working under. So I believe they're brown because Divik's Nightmare Frame, which is called the El Canar, and it's also kind of orangey brown, so I assume the colors simply reflect that. And like I said, they're, they're attacking a ghetto, but you could see it obviously for yourself. Okay, here's the big one. This is something people were talking about as soon as the trailer came out, and this is the fact that the Democles is back. Now, is it the same Democles from before? This has been the big question. The answer is, I don't think so. This is not the collector base from Mass Effect 2, where if you destroyed it in Mass Effect 3, it somehow reappeared, or not reappeared, but the servers incorporated into their own base, which makes no sense because it was literally destroyed in the Galactic Core, and of course, how they got into the Galactic Core to get it, 
again, there's a bunch of plot holes there, but I don't think it's the same Devon Cleese from before because that was thrown to the sun. It was obviously destroyed permanently. They must have rebuilt it somehow. So that must be what it is, which again is kind of like Star Wars because they did rebuild the Death Star that was destroyed. But then you can argue that they did rebuild this Death Star in the second and third film of the original trilogy. So there was some precedent for it, but with The Force Awakens, it kind of felt forced. Forced? I don't know why I said forced. Forced. And here I can see some of those parallels, but I still think it's different enough. And as someone pointed out in a Reddit post that I was responding to, that this could just be a smaller scheme in a large larger plan or a small part of a larger plan as I meant to say but yeah it's back people aren't happy about it and to be honest I kind of agree with those sentiments I think there's a lot of things they could have done instead for this story but they decided to bring back to Democles so yeah I don't know just looking at this picture by the way this does look different than the one in the original anime specifically I think the top looks a lot different I might do a breakdown video comparing this one to the other one but just from glancing at it it does appear to be be a different version of the Democles, probably a brand new model. The bigger question here is how they had the resources to produce this, where the plans came from, and if they were working on this, why did nobody stop them? I don't know. Another thing that confuses me is where the hell are we? Is this Mount Fuji? I don't think so. Was that destroyed when Lush blew up the Sakuradite mines? Maybe this is Mount Fuji. I'm not sure, but either way, the Democles is back, and some people are not happy about this, which I understand. <laughs> So here's Divic. I think he's on the Democles because he's going to use a Flare Warhead. So, yeah, he's going to use a Flare Warhead to attack the ghetto. Now, keep in mind, Flare also is something really strange to be brought back into this because I assumed that when they destroyed the Democles, they destroyed all the Flare Warheads, and I thought Nina probably worked with everyone to get rid of all that information so a new Flare could never be made again. But maybe one of the former scientists on that group is helping out with Neo Britannia. Why they would be doing that, I don't know, but that seems a little lazy to me, but that there is a possible explanation for it, but it is super frustrating. And I also realized I just interrupted the best part of this trailer, so I'll go back so you can experience the full glory of this. I really love how you can just go frame by frame on Pop Player. This is the best part of this trailer, Cornelia. That's right, she's back. And she had the same voice actress as she's had in the original anime and also in Lost Stories and basically every other media, so it's great to see her. And something else you should know, she's talking to two members of the Japanese, not sorry, Japanese, the Black Knights that are stationed in Japan. And their names are, this is Shiro Sazaz, uh, Sazanami, I'm sure I got that wrong. And this is Shizuka Karu. And essentially they're talking to her. Now when the exclusive trailer which I might actually go over because I think at this point it's safe to do so. They're also talking to other members of the United Federation of Nations and probably other Black Knight members as well. And I bet that on this call Gino, Toto, and Zhao and probably, did I say Gino? Yeah, Gino, Toto, and Zhao are probably on this call as well. Don't be surprised if you see them talking after Cornelia because they're all working together, they all wear the same uniform, and based on Resurrection they all seem to be working working together. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're part of this Skype call. So I don't know exactly what the nature of that call was, but my assumption is it has something to do with the fact that the neo Britannia has a Democles and they want to fire a Flea. Maybe it's about the fact that they still have recaptured the Al-Qaeda block after, what, four or five years? Which, again, I still don't believe whatever happened, but I guess you have to suspend your disbelief and just assume that a barrier would stop the Black Knights, even though you have some of the best scientists in the entire world working with them that could easily come up with a counter for it, and even just simple military tactics could probably get them around this barrier but whatever we're going along with it okay so in this scene here we see a bunch of characters i'll stop to go through them once it's over with Okay, so let's go back here. So this is Kensei Kuroto, and everyone thought this was Jeremiah because he kind of looks like him. The eye thing was a huge tease, so thanks a lot, guys. But he's the main leader of the Seven Stars they rescued in the first film. That's why in the trailer, they showed him like on the floor, which again, I might discuss later on. Also, he knows that Rosa is Sakuya. In fact, I believe all the head people know that she is Sakuya. This is, of course, Ash. He does not know because, well, Shiki asked him, so of course he doesn't 
no. This is again Manobi Isao. This is Yoko. She's one of the mechanics, I believe, or special op agents working with the Seven Stars. And that's it, right? Okay. Now, what we'll about Yoko, though? I said before when they first showed her art, I, I just think this outfit is ridiculous, okay? I get the Resistance group, and, you know, you can wear whatever you want. I'm sure no one cares, but it just really stands out considering everyone else is wearing these really cool military uniforms, and she's wearing literally something that person we wearing in the street corner, no offense to her. Even the women in Kogias might not have worn the best outfits, and of course I'm talking about the original series, but at least their military uniforms made sense of in context of the situation. You didn't see Naomi wearing this, you didn't see Nagisa wearing this, you didn't see Colin wearing this. Yes, they wore mini skirts, and the outfits could have been, you know, they're a bit sus at times, but this is just wow, you know? And you don't have to even go this level with the fan service because you have Catherine, and people only care about her. In fact, most of the attention from the fans has been on Catherine, not on Yoko. So it is a little weird that they're pushing that. It's just so damn distracting, unnecessary, and it also kind of lessens the significance of this scene. Like, it's super serious, and you just have her in this outfit. It's it's so stupid. But it's Kogia, so what do you expect? Isn't Haruka, she's kind of like the Colin of this season, I guess, for this show, because she pilots the best Nightmare Frame, well, the ace Nightmare Frame for the seven stars. They even show her piloting Akatsuki, and because it has the same uh, cockpit as the Gurren, they show you that same angle. So they're trying to, I guess, make you think about Colin and how she used to look in the Gurren. I suppose that's the reason for that. Then we have, of course, Rosa or Sakuya with information on Datapad. So this is Sano Yuri. A lot of people don't like her design. I kind of get it, but I, I think Yoko's is the worst. Let's move on here. Eliminator. So here's the Flay Eliminator. It says a new model, which means they obviously are based this on the old one that Nina created at the end of, not the end of, but during the Zero Requiem to stop the Flay that Schneisel will fire during their final battle. And of course, if you guys don't know, Nina was shown in the preview for the trailer of the next film within theaters. And from what I understand, what you're seeing here is exactly the same thing as that trailer, but they don't show Nina in there, which I don't know why. Why, but they didn't. Either way, she's probably helping them out with the Flay Eliminator to stop the Flayas that Divic wants to fire on the Democles. Again, there are a lot of questions with that, but I'll say that for another video. <laughs> Here is another perspective of the Democles. Again, it's impressive as always, and the art and animation here looks really good. Okay, they're going to start playing the music, and before I start talking about what we're seeing on here, a couple things to note. One, I probably have to keep pausing every 20 seconds or I'll get a copyright claim because it's actually an official song, not just, you know, background music for a video game or whatever. And two, do I think the song is good? Sure, I think Running My Head is a good song. The problem is they keep playing it every freaking time with every single trailer, and the thing is, if you keep replaying the same song over and over and over again, eventually it gets old. I think the best thing to do with music like this is to limit its use. That way, it still feels fresh and interesting every single time. In case you guys didn't know, the first film had three parts. Each part had an intro and an ending music, which means that you had to hear the same song three times. That might not annoy some people, but it's just the constant repetition is really irritating. So, I think the song is great, but we're getting overexposure with these trailers. It's almost like they're saying, hey, the show might be okay, but here's some awesome you know, Linkin Park-esque music, and the show is actually not that bad, or, well, it's a film show, whatever, it's not that bad, but the song is just, the overuse of it is driving me crazy. And of course, like I said, I'll have to pause every couple seconds here because I'll get a claim otherwise. Now, in this shot itself, this is the new Nightmare Frame that was shown, it's called the Z Artemis, it's piloted by Rosa, or Sakya, and it has Fortress mode like the Tristan and the Shinkiro, which is cool because people were wondering what happened to Nightmare Frames of a Flow unit. Well, at least we have one in the movie series. Maybe there'll be more down the road, I don't know. And obviously, if Suzaku and Colin join the fray, you'll see a lot of Nightmare Frames with float units. It is weird how there's Akoskis used by the resistance groups that don't have float units, even though they had mass-produced Akoskis with float units by the end of Part 2, to the point that even Tamaki, one of the worst pilots in the series, was using one. So it is really weird how Akoskis don't have float units nowadays, seven years, no, I'm sorry, not seven years, nine years in the future. So that's kind of weird, but again, we'll have to see when the show comes out what the reason for that is. 
Okay, again, gotta pause, apologies, but that's how this works. This is one of the Akatsuki Kais and it's taking on a Einberg member, I think, but I don't know who it is because it's too quick. But yeah, here's Akatsuki, it's getting sliced up. It's one of the Nightmare Frames that has like one of these blades. If I go through my database here of Nightmare Frames, it could literally be anything. It could be the Quinn Kraka, the Quinn Asura. It's probably not the Else Caliber. It's definitely not the one for Nightmare Frame pilot that died in the last film, so that eliminates a certain number of people. It looks like based on the blade, because there's this red tint here, it's probably El Grips, which belongs to Kristoff. So it's probably Kristoff of the Einberg who's destroying this Nightmare Frame, if I had to make a guess because of the, the red tint on the blade. All right, moving on. Okay, this is the Sekka, and it's a new Nightmare Frame that is part of the Black Knights that the Seven Stars are using. The Sekka, from what I understand, is a mass-produced Nightmare Frame, so even though it looks pretty good, it's probably not the best because, again, it's mass-produced. Although, given its unique design, you think it would be like an Ace Pilot's Nightmare Frame, but no, it's a mass-produced model, so there is that. We see more Akatsuki attacking, also using the traditional cannon from the original series that the Gloucester and Sarlin use, and now they're using them as well. Again, I don't know why no one's using float units, and even these cannons, to be honest, are kind of old-fashioned. I mean, the one that C2 had and also the one that Jeremiah had in R2 seemed better than this as well, so the technology here has definitely gone backwards. I know the Kuridai mines were destroyed, but that doesn't mean the weapons were destroyed too, right? So I am kind of confused why the technology here seems at some level advanced, but also antiquated. It's a strange combination of both of these things. I guess because their resistance group would be kind of scrappy, but understand the Black Knights are supporting them, right? So if the Black Knights are saying them these nightmare frames why would the weapon be worse than r2 level it's kind of strange to me okay this is divic again our perspective of him and this is a big boy huh all the members of the Imer are big men this guy is gigantic again so our democles because he's launching democles now it's launching i don't know exactly where this is again is this mount fuji is this from the Okaido block i don't know cool little pyramid design here but again this is the democles taking flight from whatever mountain it's on we'll find out of course when the film comes out and we can see it on disney plus Okay, a bunch of Camdens, as you see here. Again, they're part of Divic's forces, like I mentioned. They're about to fire a bunch of missiles at who? Probably the Black Knights, who are trying to invade the Democles. Also, you see this little thing here? This little uh, pillar? If you go back, they're on the Democles themselves. Probably over here or over here, I would imagine. See? And we see here the rockets are hitting the Akatskis from the bottom area. So basically it seems to be some kind of offensive where the Seven Stars are attacking the Democles from the ground and they're bombarding them from the Democles. Wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. There's no way they can even hit it from there. Because remember in the anime, the Democles flew so high up, they had to use float units to reach it. And even then it wasn't that useful. There's no way the Black Knights could go after it from that distance. What the hell? That also, it has a shield. Why would they even need like the bombardment from the top? It has a shield, right? The, oh no. Did they forget about the Democles' shield? Why would there even be an assault here? Oh no, I, I don't think they realize that, because why do you have troops on the Democles if you have a shield? The whole point of the Democles was to establish air superiority. The, I forgot the name of the, the shield itself, I do apologize, but the name of that shield can't be penned by anyone outside. The only way they can get in was for the Democles to open its own shield, and then Luch had to come in there with the Shinkiro to use its shield, again, forget the names of these things, they're so frustrating, to keep it open so everyone could fly in. The fact that they're even having this back and forth confrontation tells me that this Democles doesn't even have that shield, the one thing that made it superior in the air, which means it's a sitting duck. If it has no shield, this thing should have blown out of the sky a long time ago. This is crazy to me. Or conversely, if they don't have float units, the Democles could just reach the heights like in the original anime, and they couldn't touch anyways. So either way you look at it, this situation is kind of stupid. As much as I think it's cool to bring out the Democles, not cool, I'm sorry. Well, kind of cool, mostly lazy, but kind of cool. It actually doesn't make any sense. Now that I think about it, I'm really confused. What's going on here? Because it has a shield. It also can fly in the air. Why is this even happening? Okay. <laughs> All right, here is the Quinn Kraka, I believe. I hate saying that. It sounds offensive. But uh, I think it's the Quinn Kraka. It's actually the Quinn Asura, and it's piloted by Nara. Not Nala. I called her Nala. It's actually Nara. My bad. 
Here she is, the best girl in this series so far. I know some people like Sakia for, you know, reasons because of female Lush, but to me, this is the character I'm most excited about. A combination of Jean Ro and Valletta. Should be pretty awesome. Also a little cool gauge on their Cyber Nightmare frame. I believe she fights Ash in this film, which we'll see later on. And her voice is just like Valletta's too. That sexy deep this. <laughs> There's a Queen Asura. Here's Kristoff. Here's Norlon being a troll as always. Sakura is like upset that he's leaving her. My guess is he probably tore something really messed up and she can't handle it like in every other anime ever. This is a great scene where Rosa's throwing the key to the Kitsetsu. And that's the ace pilot of the Seven Stars and the Black Knights. Anyways, Rosa's throwing this as Haruka, which is just like the scene when the Lush threw the key to Colin, acknowledging that she's going to be the ace pilot of their organization, which is a great way to pay homage to that sequence. And Haruka is basically going to be the Colin of this series, it looks like, which is fine. Is that here is more scenes of Divic's Nightmare Frame, the El Canar. This thing is a beast of a Nightmare Frame. The one thing I didn't realize is how massive this thing is. And also the firepower is insane as well, because as we watch this, you're going to see it interact with the um, with Hulk's Nightmare Frame. I'm not going to go look for the name again. And when you see that, it's like the size difference is absolutely insane. So they're currently fighting on the Democles. Which again is is weird to me because how did it get on the Democles? Now I think about it, there's no float units. How did she get on the Democles? Unless the thing has a float unit, or maybe Rosa Hitch got her on there for a ride or something. Yeah, this series has some explaining to do, but okay. <laughs> Now, one thing I want to say about this particular footage we're seeing here and earlier stuff in the trailer, the Nightmare Frame animation, it looks pretty good. The first couple of trailers looked god-awful. This is actually pretty good, probably because these Nightmare Frames don't move as fast as the Apollo. The Z Apollo, the way they animate it, it's just too hard to follow. But here, this is slow enough for my older eyes can follow this. I'm not even that old, but I feel old when I can't follow the movement of the Z Apollo. But what I'm trying to say, though, is that this actually looks pretty good. <laughs> And again, you see this? This is a pretty big nightmare frame. And this is the, again, what's it called? The Elkanar. Look how much bigger it is than it. And we haven't even seen the little drone on the top getting into the action there. So, my goodness. Also, the weapon on this nightmare frame is kind of crappy to me. Like, really? Um, a lance? I mean, I guess that makes sense. The Vincent had a lance. But the Vincent also had a really powerful elbow weapon it could use to destroy nightmare frames in a second. It just seems like this nightmare frame here is mostly good for its movement and combat speed, not so much its weaponry. This might be crazy to say, but I think the Gurren Mark II could probably destroy half these Nightmare Frames, and that thing is much older than these, which is really weird to me. Like I said before, the technology seems backwards for a lot of these Nightmare Frames, which is kind of odd because you'd think it'd be even better. The designs obviously are more futuristic, but the weaponry seems primitive compared to what we had in the past. Again, I hope they explain why that is the case. Nita, so Okay, here's an Arseka, I believe, and there's something in the air. That's the Flea, by the way, which just launched. I don't know who the hell's watching it. Good job, dude. So, oh, I see. It's the, it's the other members of the of the Seven Stars. They're terrified to death, by the way, because everyone's about to get killed by the Flea. Here's a sequence, which actually looks pretty good, considering the CGI here. But we have Ash in the Z Apollo. I guess he just jumped on here. And he's about to perform the same feat that Suzaku did in both well, Suzaku and Lush did in the original anime where they threw the Flea Eliminator to take out the Flea. Now, if the Flea Eliminator works exactly the same way as it does in the original anime, which is probably the case, maybe Nina has upgraded it for ease of use. Which is kind of weird because, again, were they expecting to see the Flea in the future? I don't know. I hope they explain it. Either way, we're getting that same moment. And if it does work that same way, then Rosa has to calculate something at the same time that Ash throws it. Again, the calculation is a little complicated. I don't remember the top of my head. But they both had to send a gear to activate the Flea Eliminator to take out the Flea. And the timing of the calculation activation and the throw itself had to be perfect. A couple seconds too late or too early and it failed. So they had to perform the same feet. Also keep in mind that Saku had to be under the Gios power to live combined with his own supernatural like human abilities to perform this. I don't know how good Ash is as a pilot but he's not better than Saku. There's just no way. So the fact that they're performing this at all is a little insulting to me because again considering Lelouch and Saku were two of the most powerful human beings at the time both intelligence and physical ability I don't know why they're even trying to replicate that with something that's not as earned. And that's another problem as well 
Because before that moment in the original anime, we saw Zaku and Luz demonstrate their intelligence and physical superiority. So by the time that scene comes into the story, you might scoff and say, oh, it's stupid and whatever, but you can't deny the fact that we have established these characters can perform this feat, and within the story itself, it makes sense. Here, we only have one film to work on, and in my opinion, throwing this part in there is a little insulting to the original anime, unless somehow they explain this away, which something tells me I'm not going to like that explanation anyways. Not so he's throwing the Eliminator, as you see there. Now we see Ash fighting against, again, the Queen Asra, so that's Nara. This actually looks really stupid. So it has, like, almost... Wait a minute, we're gonna go back here? Like a spider, almost? The four legs? What is this? I swear, every time the Z Apollo fights anyone, the animation is, like, all over the place. What's with the Queen Asra's... Oh, it's a drone. Okay, that makes sense. Still, really goofy stuff there. Of course, you can't beat him because, you know, Ash has got supernatural powers and he was a former Britannian assassin or something. Again, he's not Zaku, but they're trying to make it seem like he could be Zaku. I don't know if it's a nightmare frame itself or the pilot or both. Again, they'll have to explain this. Again, more pictures of Naira and she's terrified because I'd be too if I was about to be killed by a plot convenience or some plot armor rather. By the way, I hope they don't kill her off in the story, okay? Just so you guys know, in the first film, they killed five members already of the cast, including Arnold, Heath, Ron, Green, and Callus. So I'm terrified they'll just keep killing these people off one after another. I think if anyone's going to survive this affair, it's probably going to be Norlin and Cal Catherine, which means Nara could die right here. In fact, this could be her death scene. If Nara dies here, I'm going to be really pissed, guys, because I was very hyped about this character. Masaka! So here we have Rawls about to activate the Flay Eliminator while Ash is about to throw it. Let's so see here, it's activated. And if they're showing that, it means it probably worked and stopped the Flay Warhead. Then we see a nighttime battle, which is weird because... Wait, maybe it's not weird. Let me go back for a second here. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, the Flay was fired at night. Okay, never mind. Let's go back to where we were. Misa, yeah, so they're on top of the Democles. Again, the Z, Arden means to get up there because he's got a flow unit. How did Sakura get up there? Who the hell knows? But anyways, Rose is up there. This is probably after they stopped the Flay to go take over the Democles, I guess. Here's the Apollo doing the Apollo things. Let's see if there's anything else here. Nope, there's nothing else here, just the release date. So that's the trailer, and as I've said in the beginning when we saw it and throughout, the Democles coming back and seeing Rolls and, and Ash take care of the Flea being fired with Eliminator seems a little insulting to the original anime, and a tad bit lazy. I am hoping this is just a smaller part of a much larger scheme, and given how the Democles was even weaker than the original one, obviously this was a makeshift thing and maybe there's something bigger going on. I hope, by the way. I really do. And I also assume because they're showing this part of the film and not other things there's probably bigger things in store because after all in the first trailer they showed you things that weren't that significant for example callus people thought that might be an important character no no one cares the same goals of arnold and Gron and greed we thought maybe the fact they're killing japanese civilians might lead to something no was one part of the first film so in my opinion this is probably gonna be the first part of the second film and from that point we'll see maybe there's something bigger going on here because there is bigger stuff in store obviously taking over the kaido block the situation between sakuya and ash whatever cornelia is up to and nina's up to and of course what is l2 up to because he gave gias to sakuya who used it on ash and you know so forth and so forth besides the democles snafu i think everything else the trailer looked pretty good and now we know everything else in the story again i'm pretty impressed with what they're doing well impressed i guess is one way to put it impressed but also a little worried about what they're doing because i like how they're moving things forward but they're also taking too many steps backwards not just with the Democles, but also with the backwards technology of the nightmare frames and i'm just hoping that they try to make this make sense and i hope and with cornelia being here it makes me feel better knowing that they are going to have other characters from the original anime appear in this film because it would make sense and suggest they include Cornelia and no one else. So that would be exciting to see, and it gives me hope for the future stuff. As I said in my other videos on Rose of Recapture, I was kind of annoyed with the fact that we still had no clarification if we would see the legacy characters in this film. Films, series, again, it's really confusing, but it's one of the same, basically. Point is, we will see them, and that makes me hopeful.
Now, keep in mind, I was very critical with the news that we got from the first film. Not so much the film itself, but the trailers and information before it came out. And then once the film came out, I felt a little better about things. So I'm hoping the same will happen with this one, where they show some stuff that's a little iffy, but they're going to tie it together nicely. That's my hope. Some people call it a lazy ripoff. Some say it's better than Akito. Some say worse. Actually, no one has said this is worse than Akito. Everyone thinks it's better. I don't know until I see it, but I can definitely see why that's the case. At least the characters overall seem more interesting. Although, then again, I liked everyone in W0 and also the uh, Order of Michael. Although they weren't as developed as they could have been. And my concern with this series, the fact that there's four OVAs, not five, and more characters, which means more people are going to be killed off unceremoniously and some may never get any development. And they also have to incorporate the older cast as well. With all those things in mind, I had the same deja vu of R2 where they had to rush so many things, especially the new characters. I hope they do a better job balancing it out and maybe Rosa will lead to another series that can better expand on stuff. I know there's a prequel coming out, but I'm saying things after the fact. So those are my thoughts on the new trailer. Let me know yours in the comment section below. And if you want, I just did a full breakdown of everything that happened in the first film. And if you don't care about spoilers, which of course you don't because you got to this part in the video, then check out this video right here.